Ah yes, the mighty crossword puzzle. Welcome to assignment two for CS302. And for this assignment, we're going to be solving a crossword puzzle, except we're not gonna be given any clues. We're just gonna to try to fill out the crossword puzzle with words in a way that's going to actually fit that solves this crossword puzzle. And because we don't have clues, we have to just sort of put you know words down as we sort of you know traverse this puzzle. So we have to use recursion to sort of store our current our current position and then be able to uh, go back to a previous save point and then continue, just like in the uh, Zelda game, Breath of the Wild. If you save the game at a certain spot, but you try to take on Calamity Ganon right away, and it always saves your spot right where you're about to take on Calamity Ganon, and you, don't, you haven't leveled up your character at all, then you can't really beat the game. So you have to maybe go back to a previous save point and try a different path this time around. That's going to be really the whole idea with this um, assignment. Let's go ahead and go over the uh, more details of how, how we're going to program this uh, crossword puzzle solver. Okay, so I'm going to actually just talk about the um, sort of the data structures and the logistics first before I go into the actual how you want to program this algorithm. So in this program, you, of course, you're gonna be given sort of for input, you have to read in a file name and open up a file stream. So in your uh, file stream, so first of all, you wanna be able to store the crossword puzzle into some structure. So for all the inputs in this program, you can assume we're gonna have sort of 10 rows of 10 characters per row. So a 10 by 10 uh, character array like this, which is shown right here in this input and on this line right there, my mouse is hovering over, is gonna be what you need. Now, of course, you could also, um, maybe make this into a two-dimensional vector as well, but there's no point because you won't have to worry about resizing anything. So I guess I'd recommend just using it to a, a sort of a 10 by 10 matrix like this, character array like this. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you'll need to have a vector of strings. You could have a vector of vector of characters, but that's sort of um, an overkill, but a vector of strings because you're gonna have a list of words that you want to be able to put down on the crossword puzzle that, that solves the crossword puzzle. So let me go ahead and show you a possible input file you're gonna be given. So here is the input file. So when you read in puzzle01.txt, open a file stream, and it's gonna be what's contained in that file. So this content right here is gonna be your crossword puzzle. So as you may remember from crossword puzzles from way back in the day, there are certain spots that are sort of you cannot put a word down. There's, there's vacant spots and then there are certain spots where nothing can go in that location. So right here, the plus symbol means that you cannot put a word down on that location. And a dash symbol means that it's a vacant spot where words can be put down. So you have a word can go over here, a word can go over here, and here, and here. Now you also may notice that there's some overlapping going on. That means if I put a word down, let's say something like, uh, let's say I put London down over here. So L-O-N-D goes right there. That means only Delhi can go here because the first letter of this word to be put down here has to be D because London was put down over there. Now, of course, I could put a different word down over here as well, which means that for this word that's sort of, you know, um, um, sort of overlapping with this word right there, this word has, this first letter has to be whatever word I put over there. So of course I'll show the output in a little bit so you can see that. But anyway, you first read this in, reading these pluses and pluses and minus symbols or plus and dash symbols into that two dimensional array. So of course you could write a counter control loop that does this because you literally will have 10 rows and then you have 10 characters per row. So very easy to parse this input. And then you're gonna to have to read in a set of words. So this one will end once the end of file is reached. So this is gonna be sort of 10 by 10, but this will be end of file kind of loop right there. You read in sort of one word, you'd be one word per line, each line separated by end of line character. So you simply read in a string and you can push back into a vector. So you wanna have a vector of words. So you can store all these words to put into this crossword. So you just do end of file control loop, read one word at a time, push back into a vector. And then of course, after you hit end of line, or end of file, sorry, you essentially um, terminate the uh, loop and you close your file stream. Now you can begin um, writing your program that's gonna try to solve 
this crossword puzzle. Let's go ahead and just look at the output so you can kind of see what I mean by how overlapping uh, portions happen. Then I'll go over kind of the recursive algorithm for how you want to actually um, visualize how to solve this crossword puzzle. So this is I know, a little bit out of order, but I want to first show the output before I go into any, any more detail. So over here, for our first puzzle, remember we had a bunch of dashes in these spots. So those words like London, Delhi, Iceland, and Ankara, we had to put those down in such a way that works. So for example, I put London over here. So then Delhi, since this word and this word overlap, that means this word must start with the letter D in order for it to fit. Then it ends with the letter I. So this set of dashes and this one overlap. So then this word going in a downward uh, sort of position has to start with I. And of course, Ankara, since it goes through all this, since Iceland has an A at this position, only Ankara can fit there. So the words are going to be inserted from top to bottom, left to right. So London won't be written like L, O, and like, like L being down here and then it works its way up like that. And also Delhi is not written from right to left. So all the words that are going to be written will be always from top to bottom and from left to right. So just remember that. And of course, my other puzzles I have as well, you know, puzzle two, this is just another puzzle again with the different set of words, different crossword puzzle, but they're all 10 by 10. So in fact, I'm going to use um, these in the um, in code grade as well. I might add an extra edge case into code grade, but these are going to be the three I'll definitely use in code grade, but there's a chance that it could be um, other sorts of inputs I could use. So I haven't written a code grade yet before making this video, but for sure, these three will be in the code grade sort of uh, input output checker. But I could put some extra edge case for the fourth one just to make it a little bit more difficult, if you will. But if you wrote this program in a certain way, there is no way the edge case can sort of break it because if you're doing, if you're trying every single possibility, your program will eventually will find a solution. But just in case, if you didn't try to hard code your um, algorithm, then it will fail on that fourth case if you try to hard code stuff. So don't hard code it, just make sure you write this uh, backtracking based algorithm. Okay, so now let's go ahead and finally begin talking about the recursive function and how you can try to visualize how you want to write this recursive function. And just like that, by magic, I have this um, structure drawn out here on this uh, OneNote uh, page. So pretty much, um, this matrix right there and the right over here in this uh, page, that's going to be that crossword puzzle. So I sort of color coded this. These green numbers are going to be the row and column indices. These red plus signs means that you cannot put a word down over there. And these blue dashes is going to be where you're going to sort of insert the words. And right here is my list of words. So you can have to create a Boolean function and I call it bool foo in the uh, write-up. Now, of course, you know, please use a different uh, function name. I just call it foo just to sort of keep it open. But of course, you know, pick a creative uh, function name. Now, the parameters you're going to have to pass into this function will as as follow. You have to, of course, pass in this matrix into the function, obviously. And since we have a matrix, a uh, two-dimensional array, it's going to be automatically passed by reference. And of course, we're going to want to do that because we're going to have to overwrite. We're going to have to, you know, of course, these um, plus, these, these dashes, we're going to have to write the words over here. So of course, we're going to update this uh, matrix. So we're going to have to, of course, pass by reference because, well, you know, we're going to update this as we uh, traverse this. I guess I'm trying to like erase this, but it won't undo for some reason. That's fine. I was going to clear this out. But anyway. You're going to pass it by reference and you're going to pass this list of words also possibly by reference. Now, if a vector is used to store these lists of strings, remember vectors are not going to be passed automatically by reference because vectors are objects, not arrays technically. So you want to, you want to make sure you put the ampersand symbol somewhere in the parameter telling it that this is passed by reference. And then you're going to also want to pass other parameters in as well. So the way this function is going to work, foo, is that whenever you call a function foo, you're going to create a save point. So whenever you put a word down on this puzzle, you right away save that puzzle at that moment. And you're going to continue, but at some point you may have to go back to the previously saved point 
and try something else because you may put a word down somewhere in the crossword puzzle, but you have no idea if that word is going to work when you first put it. They may have to put a word down. They may have to go back and put a different word down at that location because for example, in this spot right here, there's actually two choices. So London and also Ankara can go in that spot. But if we put Ankara down, we'll see later on, as we try to insert the puzzle and put more words down, we'll see that it's gonna cause uh, a failure. You have to go back to this location and then put London down afterwards next. Or you could get lucky and put London down first immediately and then you get your puzzle. But you know, in a general case, you put a word down and you may have to go back possibly and try a different word and then sort of continues. So you have to backtrack to a previous location, a previous save point, and then try a different word. But anyway, that part I'll go over in a little bit. So you have to also pass in a different uh, parameter as well, possibly different parameters as well. And I'll kind of paraphrase that uh, later on as I go over this uh, video. But anyway, just to remind us, this recursive function just creates a save point. So you put a word down, you save that formation of the board, and then you continue. And then having that save point is nice because you can go back to that previous save point and try a different word. And then, and again, just then branch off and continue. So I'm going to now go over as, really as um, detailed as possible without giving away too much of the code as to how to uh, sort of trace out this algorithm. So I'm going to actually give you um, some pseudocode for this um, foo function just to kind of give you an idea because it's going to involve using a loop and recursive function call. So obviously the first thing you have to do in this, now there's more to this you know, code than just the pseudocode, but I want to at least give you the idea for how to work this out. You want to, of course, uh, you know, find um, a location um, uh, for a word. So this obviously would be possibly a nested for loop because you're going to have to, um, well, you're going to have to iterate through your two dimensional array and find a spot where a word can go down. Now I'll leave that to you to figure out when you determine where a word goes down. So you want to first figure out where a word could go, which I'm guessing if you find a position that's not a positive um, sort of character, so if going up here for a second, if it's not a positive plus sign like that, that means a word can go there potentially. So let me just go ahead and just scroll, scroll up a little bit more. Okay, I won't scroll up any further, okay. So once we find a location for a word, well, we must find the orientation. So is it gonna be left to right? and or top to bottom, because you could have a spot, like you could find a location like this, you could have a spot where you have, let's say this, and I'll put some pluses around. This could happen, where when you're traversing through your board, you may find a spot like this, where you find a location like this, but it actually, a word you could end up putting words down like this. That's sort of an edge case where you could have it where you have to put down sort of two words down at this spot. So you want to be able to handle this situation. So you want to know if this spot is oriented top to bottom or left to right or maybe both. So make sure you kind of uh, check for that. Now, um, after this, once you verify it has to go down a certain direction, you want to then, you want to sort of place a word into um, the vacant location. So of course this could involve you putting it down left to right or top to bottom, you know, whatever way you have to do this, you place it down. And then you have to go ahead and call a foo function right away. So you, then you call, so I'll put this here, you wanna call um, sort of the uh, foo function and you have to basically, so we call foo, that means you have a save point. You, you found sort of a spot to put this foo uh, sort of uh, function or foo, um, sorry, you found a spot to put a word down. So then that means, okay, you call foo, which means you're gonna stop this current function and halt it for a second. 
and you're going to call another foo function, which means you're going to have to essentially um, sort of pass in the, the puzzle. But of course, you know, this puzzle will be updated because you, you put a word down right now. And also, you I guess I put this here. You want to somewhat, you want to remove the word from words list. Now, um, you know, it's up to you how you work that part out. And you want to call a foo function. You pass in this updated words list. You pass in the updated um, puzzle. And you want to also pass in to tell this new foo function where to start from. Because right here, when you're saying, like at the very top of this um, program, you're saying find a location for a word, you have to have a starting point. So you gotta pass in maybe the row and column position that tells you from this spot, you're going to start your search. So you wanna pass in a different row and column position that tells this foo function you're about to call right here um, from where to begin, so where to look for its new uh, location. Now, that part, I'll leave that to you. So this foo function returns a true or false value. So if it returns true, this, this function call right here, that means you know everything worked out. So then relay a true back automatically. If this foo returns a false, then you have to go ahead. So you, know, you have two scenarios. This could return true or false. If it's true, then re ret return true immediately. Re relay it true all the way back to the very beginning. If it returns false, well, then you're gonna have to go, you're gonna have to essentially um, sort of undo this. You wanna basically, you have to undo these two things. So you have to put that word back into the list and remove that word from that vacant location. And then try a different word in that location. Try a different word in your list. If another word does work, then put that word down in a vacant location, remove that from the words list, and again, call the foo function. So I'm gonna go ahead and sort of, you know, maybe you have to undo, undo that basically. And then you have to, again, redo and put a new word down in a location, if that makes any sense. And then you call foo function again. And you keep doing this loop right there. You keep doing that again and again. Now, if you tried every possible word, and either no word, no other word can fit, or you tried all the words and every word you placed down all returned false, well then you have no choice but to return false back to the previous function call. And if from that previous function call, it will try to put a different word down and continue like so. So that's sort of the pseudocode in a sense for this algorithm. Now let's go ahead and try to sort of visualize and draw out how it's going to work on a given example. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about this uh, problem. So we're given this board and we have a set of words on the right side. So let's go ahead and work out this uh, function. So in main, obviously, when you call the foo function, well, I'm gonna do this for you. So you would call foo and I would just say, maybe pass in zero comma zero. And then of course you pass in the puzzle, the two dimensional array and that vector of words, obviously. And why zero, zero? Because we're going to begin our search from row zero, column zero, which is going to be uh, this element right here. We're gonna begin our search from there. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is find our first vacant spot. So obviously index zero, zero in our puzzle has a plus sign, so you can't put a word there. The next position, oh, I found um, a dash, which means, okay, that implies that I can put a word there. Now I have to verify the directions that we have to sort of either left to right or top to bottom to insert the word. But of course, um, I'll leave that part for you. But of course, here we can see that from top to bottom is how the word has to be um, arranged. So you can kind of figure out, I'll let you figure out how, to, how you want to handle that. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we see, okay, from top to bottom, the word can go. And we have a six, um, six dashes from top to bottom, which means that we have uh, a six letter word we can use. So I think um, London is what actually went there for the final solution. But let's go ahead and just see that what if, let's say, for whatever reason, we decide that Ankara goes down. And Ankara can fit there because it's six letters and there's six wildcard um, characters like this. So we can put Ankara down, no problem. Let's go ahead and try that one first. So I'm going to just put down the word Ankara.
And then I'm going to remove this word from the list. So I'm going to just going to cross it off. We have to somehow, you know, check this or do something that denotes that Ankara is no longer in my available words list. So now I put a word down. Now I want to go ahead and call the foo function. I'm going to just put a line over here. And we're going to call a foo function. I'm not going to tell you what parameters to pass in. I'll leave that part for you. But you want to basically um, continue the search. So you just put a word down over here. So you want to continue. So then after this, you're going to then loop through this. Of course, you have a nested for loop inside this function. And next available spot where word can go down is going to be right here. Now, how do you figure it out? Use a nested for loop and you want to pass in some, you know, row and column positions, possibly that tells you where you want to start from. That part is up to you. I'm not going to give away anything on that. But you have to somehow you have to, you know, play around with this and debug and think about this and figure out what you want to pass in to this function foo. But of course, you're going to pass in the updated puzzle, updated words list, and you want to pass in um, a row and column position to, you know, to start the search from. So that part is entirely up to you. I'm going to leave that to you right now. So, OK, we found this word right here. I boxed this in in yellow and we see that, OK, well, no word can go here because unfortunately we have several wild cards, but the first word, first letter, sorry, in this word is not a wild card. It has to be letter A and there is no available word that has an A to begin with. So that means at this state, we, we found a, a location that something, a word cannot go down right there, which means that we can't, we can't complete this puzzle. So in this recursive function call, a false gets returned back to the previous function calls. Remember, when I called foo, I sort of saved, you know, my status of this game board. So I, when I put that on Kara and then called this next foo function, this previous foo function, I don't think you can see the mouse here, unfortunately, but this foo function right here saved the location or saved my place in this game, if you will. And I went on, I found out going from this state to this state, well, it led to a false. We can't win this game. At this spot so we have to go back to a previous save point and try something different so i'm going to go ahead and cross this off we go back to a previous save point and in our previous save point we were right here where we put the word ankara down right over here and that led to a fail later on in the game so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to unmark this back to the way it was unmark all of this I'm going to remove it, so I'm going to put Ankara back into my words list. And now I have another word, London. And London also can fit there because there are six characters in London. There are six wild cards because there are six dashes from top to bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and put London down instead. Maybe this is going to lead to a successful uh, sort of puzzle solving. Let's try London. I'm going to cross it off. And from this foo function up top, I'm going to now spawn a new function, a new foo function, and I'll leave the parameter part, you know, for you to think about. So we have this loop inside of this foo function. I'm going to mark it here because you can't really see my mouse. In this foo function right here, we have a loop. And we're going to call a recursive call within our loop. And then what happens is, like over here, when I called the second function, a false was returned back up. That means, okay, that means I have to try a different word in that spot on my board. If a true was returned back, that means the puzzle was solved, so I relay true all the way back to the front. But since a false was returned, that means, okay, we have to try a different word. So that, again, you're going to have to write the code that works that part out. But I'm just giving you just a general algorithm because... Um, recursion might be a little bit tricky for 302 students who are just, you know, starting off in 302. Anyway, now we have this. We have to go ahead and do the same thing. We call, we put London down. We call a new foo function. And this new foo function right here, we're going to now look for our next vacant spot. And, you know, using your NASA for loop, you verify, you figure out that, oh, here's my next word would go right over here. So, of course, you have to, you know, get the details done. How do you verify a vacant spot? How do you verify what direction it's supposed to go? That's really entirely up to you to think about that. But I see one right here. Okay, so now I have a where it's five letters and there's five wild cards, but that first character is not a wild card. So I gotta find a word that has letter D and Delhi has a D for the first letter. So D, then E, 
then L, H, and I. So it does actually fit. So it works. So I'm going to go ahead and cross off the word deli. And now in this function call, I'm going to now save my spot. So at a save point, I hit a checkpoint. I'm going to go ahead and call foo and pass in, you know, of course you pass in the words list, updated words list. You pass in your uh, puzzle. You pass in, you know, possibly a row and column value that tells you where to continue to search from. That part, I'm going to leave that to you. But we saved this spot because we put Delhi down, so we saved it. And now we're going to continue from this, and we're going to try to find next available uh, sort of um, word or next available spot in the puzzle. And we see that the next available spot is right here. Again, how do you figure that out? Well, you're going to have to write that nested for loop code that you know verifies where it is. That part is really kind of almost 135-ish in a way to figure out where the next word can go. So okay, we found that this is where a next word can be. And we got to figure out, well, it's going to be from top to bottom, obviously. It's going to be seven characters. And there are six wild cards. And there's one I sort of starts with letter I. So we see here that, well, Iceland has to work. So, I mean, another trick to this is you can try every word. So you could try Ankara first. Ankara wouldn't fit. Iceland, you try Iceland next. That one fits. So you could just brute force it and try every word, every available word you have left and try to fit each one of them in there. If none of them fits then obviously return false. If one of them fits, then go with that one that fits. So you can just brute force it and just literally just try to put Ankara down first, which wouldn't work. Then try Iceland, and then Iceland does work. So again, I'm giving a little hint right there on that. But let's say we tried Ankara. Ankara wouldn't work. Next letter we have available, Iceland, that does work. So you go ahead and put Iceland down. It's a very brute force um, algorithm in this program. Iceland's put down, we cross Iceland off, and then we're going to now save our spot. So we hit a checkpoint, we call a foo function, and we pass in the set of parameters. Again, pass in the puzzle and the words list, and maybe pass in some elements that tell us this, this bottom function where to begin or where to start with its search. Okay, as we progress, we eventually finally find that, oops, I'm gonna be consistent here. And of course, I erased too much. This is going to be a little bit tricky. Okay, I mean, I mean, okay, you know what? It's okay. Let's, let's just go with that. So we find that this word right here, right here we have an opening. And we have only one wild card in the middle. So again, we only have one word to try. So we try that one word out, and we see that one word does fit in that yellow box. So we're going to go ahead and put Ankara right there. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and sort of, you know, just do this. Okay, let's put this back in like that. All right, so now we're going to put Ankara down. Yeah, notice that the other, the other bar disappeared as well. Let me, let me put that back in over here just for a second. So it's consistent. Perfect. Okay, so we put Ankara down right there, and then we cross this off. And now, we can safely return true because all the words in our board, I mean, all the words have been used. They're all crossed off. So at this point, we could spawn a new function, and a new function hits a base case immediately because all the words are done, or we can just return true right here. So it's up to you. But the way I did it actually is I would have spawned a new function actually, passing the same sort of stuff. But in that function body, I have several base cases at the very top. And then the base case would have been hit. It would have saw that, oh, the words list is empty, or list of words that we have, you know, it's all crossed off. So I'll return true. That means all the words have been used. We can cross this off. And going back to the previous function call, each function call in this tree, all of them are currently in a for loop, but they're all halting because they all spawned a different function. And in this case here, a true was returned back up, which means, okay, just stop the function immediately and simply relay true back to the previous function, telling us that the, the game is solved. Then again, relay true to the very top, and then relay true over here. And of course, this relays true back to main. And in main, we can conclude that, yes, the game was solved. So when a false is returned, that means you tried all possibilities. So 
obviously when you when you were when you find a vacant spot, no word could go in that vacant spot. That means okay, the game can't be solved. Return false back to the previous function call that tells the previous function to um, continue, and then it'll continue as in okay, keep that loop running and try to find a new word to put in that spot. And if no new word can be found, okay, we'll return false back to the previous function. That function will try to go ahead and do something different. It will try to put a different word down, possibly. So that's really um, the basic sort of um, algorithm for this um, assignment. So anyway, there could be some other edge cases I could use for the code grade, but the first, I think the first three um, input outputs will be very straightforward. And the last maybe one or two um, sort of test cases on code grade will have an edge case, which will be a little bit trickier, but it will kind of test out if your program does in fact backtrack correctly and everything else. But anyway, uh, that's the end of this video. Hopefully this video did help you. Um, I guess as always, take care, stay safe, you guys, and until next time.